stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leaves him raised like Simba or cracked like the Beast Dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need free wish Stay at home, Disney Entertainment Company intro. I don't know what that is. 1997, wonderful year. Was that the year we peaked as a society? You could argue it. Anyway, Snow Dogs with Cuba. Show me the money. I was uninspired. We have a dentist, and it's Bring Your Kid to Work Day. Dr. Brooks has his little boy dressed up like a real dentist, but he's more excited about spitting in his chair. Fair. Uh, dentist Dad bestows dental wisdom upon his son, uh, but when he makes his kid look in this lady's mouth, young Cuba can't take it. He runs out of the room and pukes. From there, we jump to present day, and we get a tropical intro of him jogging in Miami, and it's beautiful, and I love it, and I want to be there. He pulls up in his fancy convertible, sees his picture on the side of a bus, and we get it. He's rich. He has a great life. He's a dentist. Have I been to Miami? Is that where Bush Gardens is? I've only seen the world through theme parks, and I have no apologies for that. He grew up to be a dentist after all. I guess he can look at mouths now without puking. I hope so. He works at Hot Smile. That's the name of his dental office. His mom is there handing out sugar cookies to the kids in the waiting room, and he scolds her. Sugar, bad for teeth, Mom. His assistant comes in with some guy who serves him, like, legal papers. It's a will. It's about some lady who died in Alaska. His assistant goes, Alaska? Are they looking for the white Dr. Brooks? Mom has a moment. She comes clean. Tells him he's actually adopted and he passes out. Oh, Cuba, such acting. Academy Award worthy. He stumbles through the crowd in a haze, goes outside, heads towards the ocean. His assistant stops him, tries to talk some sense into him, but he has a complete breakdown, though. Why am I a dentist? His assistant's like, because your daddy was a dentist. But his daddy wasn't a dentist, was he? He has a nightmare about Alaska and he wakes up screaming, I'm an Eskimo! Can you still say that? Uh, Rupert is the name of his assistant and he bought a whole bunch of funny stuff for his upcoming Alaskan trip. Uh, there's a barking dog in the balcony beside him and he runs out in rage and screams, Chester, I hate you at the dog. And I don't know why that made me laugh, but it did. He's almost late for his flight to Kachekna. At the airport, on the way to Alaska, he sees this cocky white guy with his sled dog team. And this guy looks like the bad guy in all those 80s ski school movies. His pilot, in this tiny plane to Alaska, is the one that actually served him the papers in his office. He goes, yeah, I'm the like, mayor and the police captain of Kokekna. Beautiful shots of what I assume is Alaska. I wouldn't know as they fly there. Comedy, as he's somehow still unprepared for the harsh climate. Inside the bar, we meet the tough, no-nonsense hot waitress, and every dude there is tough. But in walks city boy Cuba, and the waitress goes, he looks just like her. Cuba is a fish out of water, and he orders a decaf latte. Hot waitress says, honey, you can get anything you want here, except a decaf latte. She gives him a coffee instead. He's like Hermie of Kokekna. Everyone has tooth issues now and wants to be his friend. Now they're reading the last will and testament of Cuba's real mom. The will starts with a round of wild turkey for everyone in the bar on her. Everyone cheers and the music goes serious. As this giant called Thunder Jack swaggers in and everyone watches him in awe. The will reading continues. Dead mom leaves her coat to the waitress and to her son, Ted Brooks slash Cuba. She leaves the rest of her worldly possessions. And to Thunder Jack, she leaves her outhouse and all its contests. Contents. Thunder Jack thinks about it, then laughs. Her will ends, quote, If I'm in hell, at least it's finally warm. That's really funny, because Alaska. Cuba's off to his mom's house to see what she left, and this is kind of awesome, because his dead mom's name was Lucy. And we recently adopted a husky, also named Lucy. He gets inside Lucy's cabin thing, house, lights a lantern, looks around all his mom's, looks at all his mom's stuff. He's taking pictures of everything he's going to sell on eBay. He sees a picture of his mom, a trophy, and a husky. Arctic challenge, third place uh, is the trophy. Then Bark Bark, a dog sneaks up on him and brings an empty bowl over to him and he looks for some chow. He looks in the cupboard and finds another husky and suddenly dogs are coming out of every room and nook and cranny in this little house. He runs outside to escape the dog who tore up his feathered coat. Thunder Jack sled dogs up and finds uh, Cuba asleep in the barn. He demands, where are those dogs? Thunder Jack storms into the house and commands the dogs to sit and they all do because they respect his authority. He asks how much Cuba wants for the dogs. 
Thunder offers him $200 for all of them. Uh, Cuba says no, and Thunder gets in his grill, like he's going to beat him up, and Cuba goes, 200 is fine. But suddenly, Waitress appears and is like, those dogs are worth $500 each, and that main one, Demon, he's worth 1000 They then feed the dogs slump, which is hooves and lips and organs. The Arctic Challenge is coming up. That's the dog race. Other than the Iditarod, it's the biggest dog race in the world. It's five days long. He asks, who would be dumb enough to do that? Uh, waitress says, your mom. Cuba asks the waitress if he knows who his father was. She goes, how many black guys are here? The answer is two. So he goes to the first place to see Arthur. And there's a misunderstanding. Arthur thinks he's there as a dentist. He goes, wait, you're not my father? And Arthur thinks about it and goes... If I say yes, do I get a discount on my dental work? That was good stuff. Uh, so then Cuba storms out, and he tells the pilot to take him home and give away all his stuff and give his dogs to Thunder Jack anyway. He goes to say goodbye to the waitress before he leaves. He tells her if she ever comes to Miami, his number is on all the buses. Yeah, flex. Uh, as they're leaving, waitress has a come to Jesus moment and runs out and goes, I know who your father is. It's James Johnson. The old WWF music guy that's not in the Hall of Fame. He knocks on James's door. It's Thunder Jack. Thunder doesn't care about him and how he might be his dad. He just wants to buy the dogs. He tells him to pack his big city butt and head home. And now Cuba says, oh, no, I'm not leaving. Cuba calls him dad and Thunder knocks him out. Now Cuba does 180 and now he's going to stay and he's going to be a mush master. His mom, like his mom back in Miami, calls him and is like, so when are you coming home? She asks, how is Alaska? He says, everything is white, including my dad. She says, that explains why you love Michael Bolton so much. Ah, take that, Michael Bolton. White people music. The Huskies are so cute. I love them. Theodore Brooks, DDS, is now all in as a dog trainer in Alaska. And it's time for a montage. Demon, the main dog, thinks he's the alpha dog. And Cuba has to show him he's the alpha. Some local tries to give him that advice that you have to, like, show dominance. He goes back to the bar and the waitress is roundhouse kicking some local drunk inside the store is a cardboard cutout of that famous snow dogger that was at the airport being a jerk and Thunderjack spits on it so hard the cardboard cutout falls over. Thunderjack starts giving him the hard truth. He's like, these dogs are athletes and they need to run every day or they go local. Uh, Cuba asks Thunderjack to train him and the dogs. Cuba tries his luck with Demon and hooks up all the dogs to the sled. Waitress pulls up on her snowmobile and is like, want to go bang? And he's like, can't. Training dogs. Luckily, she knows these dogs and what order they need to be in in the sled. Glassed up his demon. He was Lucy's pride. The dogs are conspiring with each other. And then they take off, and Cuba goes spinning off the sled into the snow. Poor Cuba. He tries tying his hand to the sled and ends up getting dragged when he can't stay on. More training montage. I like how they're portraying this dentist as a bumbler. Like, dental school is damn near impossible. And he clearly is a smart, successful dentist who is the top of his profession back in the States. But out here, oh, he's a bumbling idiot. Uh, so weird. They should have, like, Billy Madison to this character and had him, like, inherited this wealth, but he's still a screw-up. Anyway, up on some hill, he meets the waitress there, and she's like, how did you know about this? This is Lucy's special place. And he goes, I read it in my mom's diary. Reading your mom's diary. Oof. And then she wants to show him her special place. She gets him talking about his birth mom, and he realizes how much he misses his other mom, his Miami mom, the one that raised him. She says, Lucy didn't always win, but she always finished what she started. That's what the waitress said. And then they wolf howl together. Oh, Alaska is awesome. Or wherever they're shooting this, pretending it's Alaska looks awesome. We cut to the next scene, and Cuba wakes up and asks, so, how did you sleep? And we pan over, expecting it to be the waitress, but it's another dog. That's good stuff. It's his dog, Nana. Uh, he's back to try to figure out the sled dog situation. He suits up with authority and announces, Let's go! Let's go! What year is this? I thought that was an annoying call to action until like 2022. Training montage. He's getting, he comes face to face with a bear. We get some comedies. He runs from the bear. He falls off a cliff. He lands on a little ledge like it's like Looney Tunes. He laughs because it saved his life. And he screams and of course it breaks. And he continues to fall to his death while some like Latin jazz music plays. After 10 minutes of him falling and stumbling and rolling and slipping, he knocks himself out. And he daydreams. He's on the beach in Miami with all these dogs. But they're sitting in, in like beach chairs sipping margaritas and they're talking to him then his mom appears and then michael bolton playing himself appears in the sky and says no matter what color you are you can still have soul then a hot waitress appears in a bikini and tells him to relax and starts bending over him and he snaps out of his like delusion and he's back in alaska by a fire thunderlips is there thunderlips saved his life he tells him the story about how he banged his mom in exchange for the dogs but here's the twist he never banged his mom
He's like, I wanted to, and I didn't, and then she was gone. Cuba's like, all right, I guess I'll be leaving. He leaves Thunder, his dogs, and Cuba is back at home in Miami watching the dog race on his TV. Thunder is there ready to compete against the famous airplane jerk. Uh, Mum is going through the stuff he brought back. She drops one of the pictures he brought back from Alaska of his birth mom, and it breaks, and there's a picture behind the picture, and there's a picture of his mom and his dad and the baby, and it is Big Thunder Mountain after all. Cuba is catching the next, next flight back to call him on it. He gets back, and Jack is missing. He didn't heed the warning. He took the dogs and went straight into the storm. Cuba's like, I know where he is. When I was lost, Jack came looking for me. He doesn't have a lead dog. Oh no, he doesn't have a lead dog, but he does. He calls his mutt Nana. He hooks Nana up his lead and makes this poor dog run with some other dogs to their own death, basically. He goes the wrong way through the race, just as the famous guy is going the right way, and they cross each other, and the, the main guy finishes. He won, and then his team tries to dump water over his head like you do, but it comes sliding out as a block of ice and knocks him out. That was funnier. Then it sounded when I explained it. It made me laugh out loud, for real. His mom came to Alaska as well, like his Miami mom, and meets the waitress. Waitress's name is actually Barb. The TV reporter picks up the story of a missing racer, Thunder Jack Johnson, and they just learned about an official rescue party. Woo! Cuba goes to an ice mountain cave looking for Thunder and finds demons so he knows he's here. He finds Jack with a broken leg and the other dogs. He calls him out on his lies. You are my father! He tells the real story that Lucy got pregnant... Uh, she knew this guy, Thunder Jack, like himself, would be a deadbeat dad, so she told him to just go and leave her life forever. So they find out Demon is always angry because he has a toothache. That's convenient. But first, Cuba bites Demon on the ear, which was like a recurring joke I never tracked until now. It was basically what everyone told him to do to Demon to show dominance. But then he uses his pliers and pulls something stuck out of Demon's guns. And now Demon is nice and leads them out of the cave with a big smile and back to the town. We get some, like, bad, really bad green screen footage of danger as they almost slip off a cliff. Demon goes into Demon mode and pulls them up and saves everyone. So much green screen. So much slow-mo green screen footage in this part. So unnecessary. So much soaring music. Mom has a heart-to-heart -heart with Barb. She's like, I never told Ted he was adopted. Barb is like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then siren sounds. The last racer is coming in and all the dogs and thunder and cuba everyone goes nuts and everyone is cheering the news lady is still there with her cameraman ready to go live awesome okay just like leave a reporter and a camera off outdoors in alaska 24 7 until something happens sounds like something any news station would do right like feasible financially ted's mom is like of course i came here i'm your mom when he's like what are you doing here he introduces jack to his mom and and the scene suddenly has weight. Legit. Next up is Barb. She and Cuba hug, and they're about to deep tongue, but then the guy with the torch breaks it up. This is the last person across. Has to blow out the race torch. So Cuba and Jack blow it out at the same time. We get a Michael Bolton song over the final montage. Now Cuba and Waitress get married in Alaska, and New Mom has the hots for Jack, old dad, and we get a cutaway of his dental assistant, who is miserable and freezing out there. The Alaskan wedding is also really funny. We move forward in time. Barb is pregnant, working at the new Alaskan dental office that Cuba opened. We end, though, in Miami, and his old dental assistant is now the face of Hot Smile, the new, like, main dentist, and his face is on the side of a bus. Solid ending. Ah! Like most action Disney movies from this time period, it was hit and miss, but all in all, fun watch. I like Alaska. I like dogs. I like huskies. Some, sometimes it's just that easy. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism and personal appearance.